Hello there, I'm Alex Clear and I'm here at Be Brau Beviala 2018. I'm joined by Olivier Goffin, who is the Vice President of Beers, Wines and Spirits for Gibo Cermics. Olivier, thank you very much indeed for joining me. You're welcome. Can you do, tell us a little bit about what you're exhibiting on stand here at Brau Beviala? Uh, what we exhibit today is, is uh, the, the, the end of our journey, which is about uh, a, a campaign that we launched last year about uh, Gibo Cermics and Sidel back to the beer industry. So we presented uh, some new technology uh, last year. Uh, the, the industry was uh, really waiting for us to come back. Uh, so we had been away from the industry for uh, quite a while. Uh, we had a very uh, big install base in the past, but uh, uh, the company uh, strategy had uh, moved towards uh, PET. And th there was a big need from the industry for us to come back. And this is. Uh, not the end of the journey, but it's a, it's a major milestone in us coming back to, to the business, having uh, been able to sold uh, some of these new machines uh, to very large customers recently. And uh, this is uh, a very good place to uh, uh, come back to the market and uh, show to, to, the, to the industry that uh, we are effectively uh, back on track. It certainly is. And the idea is that whatever packaging material your customers decide to put their products into, you have solutions to help Yeah, them. we have solutions. Uh, we, do, we can do cans, we can do bottles, returnable or one way, and uh, still uh, PET uh, in beer, which is a challenge for the global industry. Probably not prepared today, but could be a very interesting container for the future. When we think about cans and bottles for beer, do you have a sense of how that differs from one region to the next? Yeah, when, when you look at uh, the various uh, regions in the world, so if we had to take Latin America, it's still a highly uh, dominated market by the bottles. Uh, North America is an interesting uh, region at the moment because uh, today 20% of, of the, the beer market has been taken over by the uh, craft brewers. Uh, the, so the whole American industry has been shaken by these guys and they come with uh, wacky ideas, different product, uh, and they have pushed the can. So th it, it was a very good, uh, interesting and uh, challenging opportunity to have these guys uh, uh, coming back with new product in a, in, a, in a container that is not the usual one for the US. So they decided to go for can. And, and then another region which is quite interesting is Southeast Asia. Uh, when you compare countries like Thailand or Vietnam, it's a very different culture about how people would drink beer. Thailand will probably be more towards uh, bottles, which has been a historical uh, container because it was introduced from European uh, big places like Carlsberg who, who brought really the beer to uh, Thailand. And then uh, you compare that with Vietnam, which is very different, where the can is probably the biggest uh, container used uh, on the market today. Other countries will have a, a mixed feeling about uh, how to, to fill the beer. Uh, you take Cambodia and Cambodia is, is a more 50-50 uh, between the bottle and, and the cans. So it, it's down to uh, the marketing and, and a can is a very good material to express uh, the, uh, the DNA of your own brand. So it, it is around, uh, easy to decorate a container and uh, uh, actually, when you look at how uh, cans are decorated today, it can be quite amazing in terms of uh, uh, design and uh, how you want to uh, convey the message about your brand. Touching on that point, you mentioned that can is the domain of the craft beer segment. Do you get the sense now that, that cans are becoming almost as premium a packaging material as bottles, or is it still seen as a very functional packaging material? Well, uh, in some countries it's still seen as a as an average uh, uh, type of beer. But uh, with the push of the craft rule, you really see this as becoming the support for premiumization and even the super premium, because people uh, want to move away from, from the larger, genuine, uh, big uh, global brands, and they want to drink something new. And, and the can is, is, is the ideal container for these guys, because filling a can is probably much more easier than to fill a bottle. Uh, in terms of um, capital investment when it comes to investing uh, uh, in a kind line. It's slightly more competitive uh, than, than a glass line. You don't have the problems of having to return the bottles when it, it is in, in a returnable market. 
and uh, you can run small batches, you can uh, have a very quick changeovers on the kind line. So it's, it's probably a highly more flexible container than a bottle. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why the craft brewers decided to go for that. And this, this has again shaken the industry. Um, it was a new challenge brought by the, by the craft brewers, but today if you see the big players, they are all following. And we, we see that uh, uh, what we have done over the, the four last years. So we've been really uh, supplying a lot more can lines than, uh, than glass lines. So the demand is definitely there. Okay, and as the, the industry becomes more diverse, obviously, with the increase in craft, is there still such a high focus as there was before on the pure volume of throughput on your machines? No. Um, what is driving the industry today is probably the, what they call flexibility, but still having a, a big need for uh, the speed and the efficiency of these lines. So it's, it's a paradigm between uh, being flexible and being able to uh, deliver uh, bigger throughput. But you, you see a step back from the, from the big guys. So they are investing in high speed lines, but on the side, they need something that is much more flexible. And we see no project coming from our customers where you have to uh, be able to deliver both demands, which are quite opposite in terms of uh, designing challenge, but this is the industry uh, we are facing and uh, we are there to uh, support their challenges. And you mentioned obviously PET packaging for, for beer, yes. not necessarily PET, but how far away do you think we are from the next big beer packaging innovation? Well, uh, PET could be the next uh, packaging uh, innovation, so there's been an uh, attempt uh, in, in a lot of parts of, of the world. Uh, unfortunately, PET has been tagged with the uh, cheap uh, retail uh, concept. Um, but if you look at from an environmental point of view, PET has still quite a lot of, uh, of benefits compared to uh, a, a, a bottle of, uh, made of glass. So transport co costs much less than uh, transporting uh, bottles, uh, glass bottles. Um, if you want to have uh, the flexibility on designing the, the package, a PET bottle can be designed very quickly and you can uh, have the luxury to very quickly have a new bottle on the market, which is much more difficult when it comes to glass. Designing a, a, a glass bottle is more complicated, it takes much more time and, and our customers today want to be the first on the market with the new container. So PET could be from an environmental point of view, a big uh, change for the industry. Um, unfortunately, it, it has had that um, negative image about is this a cheap product or is it uh, <laughs> something genuine that uh, has the, the power of a, of a big brand. I think that it certainly has. How has Brow been for you so far in these early stages and what are you hoping from this show? Well, uh, Brow this year has been uh, slightly different compared to the other years. So the first day is usually uh, the day where people are hesitating uh, to come and visit us. But uh, I'm, I'm quite amazed by the number of customers we have hosted today, uh, unlikely compared to the previous events. And uh, the challenge is about how are we going to be able to serve every customer that is visiting us. So that is the big challenge. Honestly, this is quite a nice one. Olivier, thank you very much indeed for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you.